Okay, guys. Uh, first of all, really appreciate your time uh, you have spent in this summit, and I'm grateful that the organizer uh, allowed me to speak, and uh, excited to be here with you and sharing some knowledge about uh, this wonderful topic, PowerShell Core. Uh, my name is Maximo Trinidad, and I'm a Sapien technology evangelist, and also a PowerShell MVP. I've been as an MVP since 2009, and I've been using PowerShell since 2006, since it came out. Uh, it's a very exciting uh, journey since the beginning of PowerShell, and finally, uh, people are trying, uh, tr trying to get the grasp of using the technology in their environment, which is very important. Topic of today, of course, is what's cooking with PowerShell Core. And this is basically our little agenda we're going to go through. Uh, there's a lot of information in here, and I know that sometimes it's going to be a little more repetitive because they being either the uh, PowerShell Microsoft team have able to explain some of this. But um, I'm trying to bring in the environment or how you can, uh, how can you experience the cross-platform scripting. Uh, so we're going to go through, through all these nice little topics and, uh, and then dive into uh, the real thing of what we want to accomplish here. Desktop cross-platform environment, as you know, well, we got our Windows 10. It becomes, you know, it has the Hyper-V. I don't know, how, how many of you have Windows 10? Uh, and, and I'm assuming you all have the RTM edition, right? This is six, uh, 16299. Who's using Insider Edition? Okay, me too. <laughs> yeah, we go through the burden sometimes of using the Insider Edition just because we want to be in the cutting edge, and sometimes we do pay the price. As a matter of fact, I, there was some Facebook notification that the latest edition of Insider broke ISE. So those who are not using it, you're still safe. Uh, but of course, Microsoft will address that and will make the correction. So we do have Hyper-V, VMware, VirtualBox. Uh, who's using uh, WSL? Windows Assistant for Linux. Awesome, awesome. Wow, this is one piece of feature that if you have Windows 10, the RTM edition, uh, especially is the fall edition, uh, uh, you, should, you should be able to use it. You should be able to install it. It's a feature that you have to enable first, and then you got to go to the Microsoft Store and, and pick the distribution you want to use. I, normal, I normally use the Ubuntu one, but it's is good, especially now that nowadays we're talking DevOps, and DevOps right now not only handle Windows system, only it handles all variety of systems now. And now with PowerShell Core being open source and across platform, makes it very important for you that that, that time you spend, uh, you have spent learning Windows PowerShell, it doesn't matter. The language is the same, features my difference in here and there, but you were able to, that knowledge, you were able to use it in mo moving forward. Uh, my install distribution is uh, uh, Ubuntu. Uh, you have SUSE. There's, uh, uh, there's Debian too, uh, as a matter of fact. And then, of course, now we're talking about the cloud solution, Azure, Amazon. Of course, I'm not covering neither, both in this one. But um, uh, whatever you use, the knowledge you've been trained on in the practice, you can use it in all, all different environments. Now, about the editors. We got editors, we got the Windows ISC, uh, Visual Studio Code, and then we have text-based editors that Vim, also there's a Windows version for that too, Emacs, and then all the other ones, like Notepad++, and maybe other few ones in there. Uh, those are lightweight editors, uh, in the sense that you can open it quick and code in it, uh, have extensions, and, and you can use it. Sometimes they're a little bit learning curve in configuring them, but doesn't matter. We are DevOps, we are scripters, and one thing that we do is we love the tools, we adapt to it, okay? Then we have the own enterprise level editors, Visual Studio, PowerShell uh, Studio, and all the Sapiens Pro that have all the more tools. Then again, that's your tool belt, okay? It is your tool belt. Don't think of it, oh yeah, you know, this sound like this, or, or uh, you know what, you use XML, then you use an XML editor. 
you saw SQL, they use either SSMS or use a middle lightweight uh, SQL editor for that. Now, what are the interesting features that I like? Well, okay, first of all, I'm a Sapien M M uh, MVP and a Sapien evangelist, but I'm using Sapien long before that. I mean, I've been using Sapien products since 1998. Since the first, it was only primal script for VBScript. So I've been all through all this year, I've been trusting Sapien's product all this time. So one of the interesting features that we have on Sapien uh, PowerShell Studio, template wizard, script grouping, custom tool, I'm gonna show that one very nicely on, on, on this product. Uh, cache editor, because you have to have those tools in there for one environment to do rapid application development of your scripting. So this is the application for that. Uh, and of course, we integrated the uh, PowerShell core console in it, so that way we can at least test our PowerShell against, uh, against the uh, PowerShell core. All the languages, well, beside PowerShell core, we have Anaconda. Who used Anaconda here? Do you know what Anaconda is? That's Python, well, it's a Python package for, for scientific, right? For uh, scientific use. One thing that I like about Anaconda is that the latest version will, will have Anaconda 3.6.x. All packages are included. If you have an experience Python, I mean, you know very well, you're laughing about it, that you're missing packages, you gotta go in there, do PIP install, and for each individual package, or just, or just concatenate whatever number of packages we download. Anaconda have everything. They have a minimal installation, or they have a full installation. So it's just a matter, install it, boom, and you're on, okay? Uh, SQL Server, anybody here using SQL Server on Linux? Awesome, a few of you. Well, you know what? Now that you have the ability of creating virtual machine Linux on your Windows 10 using Hyper-V, or even a VMware, or even VirtualBox, why not? It takes only minutes to install SQL Server Engine on a Linux box, and you're up and running, okay? Any, one thing that I like about Linux is that if there's a problem with a library, you can go and get it. Quick, boom, oh, I have a problem with this, then you app get, install, whatever, and, and, and you can fix it. Now, OpenSSH, OpenSSH is the standard for connectivity between Linux machine and now Linux and Windows. It's the easiest way, and now with the upcoming which was supposed to be the latest Insider Edition, 1803, build 1803. Uh, supposedly, you should be able to just turn on the machine, and it's already set up automatically in a fly. But previous version than that, there's a little step to do, but it's much easier than setting up WinRM in Linux, okay? So SSH is the way to go on, on, on the Linux side to connectivity. Uh, so, now it takes us to, to this. You know Windows PowerShell. You probably know DOS Batch. Well, guess what? PowerShell gives you the flexibility with the aliases to, you know, kind of like mimic Linux uh, command. And that's great. Jeffrey Snover did a very good job with that because he knew he was trapping everyone who was in Linux to come back to Windows and do the command line. And that was great. But this here will show you most of those languages here are cross-platform for a long time. So it was happening at one point that now PowerShell is open source. Okay, now, now it's competing. But then again, it's not meant to replace your system scripting in Linux or even SQL. No, it's another tool, but it's a .NET tool. And I love that because, I mean, not, when you start using and working .NET objects, to get that information out of the system, to do a CSV and create a report, that is amazing, okay? So right now, it's a little stats here on 2007, we're one point below, now we're one point up. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just me meaning that now people finally are realizing, oh, wait a minute, there's something interesting to do. Of course, uh, make the calculation. 2006, and we are in 2018. Wow, it took a long time. For now, for now that is open source, then that makes a big difference cross-platform, and you can contribute with it. Uh, this is an example of 
Uh, the WSL, I put there, that's the RTM 6299. And um, as you see the console, which is great, it's meant only to be used for the console. But those who are uh, hacker enough in our, in, our, in our mentality, wait a minute, I can install Ubuntu desktop on my WSL. It's not supported by Microsoft, but for what I want to do, which is create script in a graphical uh, Ubuntu, you know, Linux desktop, you know what, it works for me. The only thing that doesn't work is uh, opening VS Code on your Ubuntu desktop in WSL. Yeah, apparently there, there, there's some processes that it knows it try to open the binary in Windows, it conflicts because, oh, wait a minute, this is Linux. I don't know why, but that's the only issue with it. But then again, VS Code is a great tool for cross-platform because now you can open using it in Ubuntu, and, and I'll show you some really nice demo with that. Let's we'll see what, what I mean with that. All right, so. Windows PowerShell versus PowerShell Core. We weren't run through this, right? So this is very quick. Windows PowerShell is a Microsoft trademark. PowerShell Core is an open source. Support it. We all know Windows PowerShell is only for Windows environment. PowerShell Core, cross-platform. Feedbacks, that's very important, feedbacks. I mean, I've been policing a little bit in there because people love the fact that in the instruction in GitHub, in PowerShell Core, tell you, please include which PowerShell version you're talking about this issue. When people doesn't put the version, it because it's not to sneak in a Windows PowerShell issue in GitHub. Ain't gonna work, you're gonna be kicked out. If by any chance the issue relates, can, could relate to PowerShell Core, you know what? They will take a look at it, but it's not gonna be addressed in Windows PowerShell area, okay? So that's why in the landing page, of, uh, of the uh, PowerShell Core GitHub, it tell you, there, there's a heading telling you Windows PowerShell, difference between Windows PowerShell and PowerShell Core, where to submit those issues, okay? So this is very, very important. Of course, just like Jason Schnover said, PowerShell is complete, huh? doesn't mean it's, it's you know, completely done, and might, might be some fixes maybe in there, right? But it's not enough, the version is it's frozen, it's staking in there. PowerShell Core is the next generation, is the next task at hand for, for the open source PowerShell team to continue. And then of course, this is not gonna replace. It's meant to be side by side. No matter what's gonna happen, right? Naming, come just like Jeffrey Snover said before, maybe you're gonna name it back to PowerShell? I don't know, man. I really don't, I, 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 I will keep it separate. But then again, this is me too, you know? It's not my, it's not my prediction. <laughs> but then, all efforts are directed to Keep doing improvement in PowerShell Core, so we all know that. Uh, all right, so now PowerShell Core installation is very easy. You just go to the GitHub page, and then also uh, all the platform. You have that 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 section there to tell you all the different OSs and platform in order to um, uh, pick and follow the instruction. This is very quick and efficient. All right, now as we all know, uh, there. Are PowerShell Gallery is NuGet, and also the Chocolaté, which I'm gonna explain after this. But then again, here I give you a little rough path of where are those uh, uh, paths where those modules are gonna be stored at, okay? It's very convenient, especially when you wanna install something that is only core, then you know where to find them, okay? Now, Chocolaté, that's one thing I use Chocolaté for two things. I've been using it to uh, install the OpenSSH, because it's very simple and straightforward. When you do the charcoal info on that particular OpenSSH, it gives you a list of what's the updates version and what they have done with it, which is great. And then, of course, because I'm using uh, X Windows, uh, X, uh, what is it? Windows X Server, then I use the uh, charcoal install the X Server in order, in order to have that, that graphical enable on my WSL. So I give you that information there so you can follow it, follow it through. And of course, this is a good example when you run the info on those two different uh, program installations so you have an idea how, how it looks like, okay? I like it very much, so. By the way, every time they do an OpenSSH update, um, I'm seeing Joey Aiello mention it, oh, it's updated and every, everything. I, I think it's gonna lie, but a day later, it's available in Chocolaté, so. 
see, we always almost the current version. All right, so we install .NET develop packages. Well, you know very well .NET framework, full CLR, .NET Core is not full CLR, so Windows GUIs are not supported as a .NET Core. But I'm going to show you one little nice trick that I, that I developed with PowerShell Studio. Uh, anybody can do it. So uh, then, of course, uh, .NET Core full package. Uh, I would say PowerShell Gallery already have the PS Gallery modules installed, and uh, maybe you might need some registration to verify, but um, uh, it's very simple. So, and then of course, uh, for those who are interested in SQL Server, SMO for PowerShell Core cross-platform, meaning Linux also, there's a special, uh, there's a special Microsoft SQL Server Management object package you can download from NuGet and uh, up to now it's been pretty stable, which means you can, SQL Server uh, modules are not available in Linux, only available in Windows. If you're in Windows, you can use those uh, SQL Server PowerShell modules from Windows to Linux and get information, you, you can manage it. Now, if you're in Linux environment, it's not available. You have to create your own, which you can. And of course, what it is all about? Cross-platform ecosystem. Everything you have set up on your desktop, that's your admin DevOps uh, desktop environment. So that way you can do on-premise, hybrid, and cloud application, scripting, automation, anything you want, okay? You always start from your desktop and then you move to whatever other environment. This is my interpretation for that. Docker, Anaconda, I mean, everything is interconnected at the end. Now we're going to the demo. Awesome. Of course, I'm providing some very uh, informative links in there, some of the resources, uh, by including uh, a blog about a lot on PowerShell course. You might want to take a look at that, especially on Anaconda, SQL Server. Uh, and of course, at the end of the session, I have a PowerShell Studio giveaway. All right? So let's see how you guys interact here, and we'll, we'll see who will be the winner. OK? All right, so let's go for the demo. Let's see, I have my VMware Linux system up and running here. I'm going to minimize that. And we're going to start first with my editor. Then the PowerShell Studio. One thing you notice is very integrated. You have the feel and look of a Visual Studio uh, editor. And uh, one thing that I mentioned on my list of little features that I like is that I can group my, uh, after I open a series of script files that I've been working on, I can create a file group with them. And this is I'm going to click here for my, for my session. And also I loaded all my uh, scripts that I've been working on. Notice that I'm also included some PI. Uh, some Python files in there. Uh, of course, PowerShell Studio is meant to work for, for PowerShell scripting, but it doesn't limit you to use some of this feature to work with other console languages, okay? And I'll be demonstrate that in, in a little bit. So we'll see here. And then, of course, uh, we have the console down here. And as you can see, anyone is here? Notice Ubuntu, PS Core, 16. I have already a console pointed to my Linux uh, WSL. And the good thing about this is that WSL gives you the ability to create a path to where your C drive is. So it's called mount C program file. You can see that's, that's already, I'm already in a Windows folder in there within my Ubuntu, okay? Which is great if I come in here and I'm gonna change this to my home path. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know, probably Jeffrey's gonna knock me out in here. He's like, oh, you're gonna do this, and like, okay, okay. Well, you know what, guys, you have to understand one thing. I'm not a Linux administrator, okay? I had the opportunity to finally jump into Linux when SQL Server Preview and PowerShell Core came out. As soon as it came out beta, I just went on the Linux, gave me the opportunity to learn it. Anyone can do that uh, if you want to uh, uh, get into the new technology. So here I'm gonna place the IR, I can see all my, all my files, all, all my uh, Ubuntu home directory, okay? And now, if I wanna go to 
uh, let me see here. Let me open this one here. Okay, so we got on the first one, and I can do this, you know, I can go ahead and, uh, this is my SQL Server SMO script, which can I, I would go and make sure that registration for uh, NuGet is there. That's a script. I'm not gonna go through that one. I'm gonna go straight to the SQL side. The SQL area here, and here it is. So, because I have, uh, now, when you have multiple environment, you have to keep it up, right? Doesn't mean if I, whatever I installed my, my, uh, my components, .NET components in, in, in PowerShell Core, I have to do the same in WSL, okay? So in this guy already have loaded the SMO, the .NET Core package in both my Windows .NET, uh, PowerShell and also in WSL. I'm gonna load my assemblies in here to start working on it. And I can see in here, I can highlight, okay, I can highlight and do selection, wrong selection console, I can do that. So now running this against my, my uh, Ubuntu console, no errors. I mean, this is good. If it had errors, it means that something is wrong or maybe the, uh, the DLL was not loaded correctly. And then the next, the next will connect me uh, to the SQL server and it will uh, go ahead and bring the information I'm requesting here. So I'm gonna go here and run selection console and boom. All right, so you can see the result set on my .NET object, I connect it to my Ubuntu SQL Server, and I'm on my Windows environment. So it connect, and it gave me the information back. Okay, so now, one of the other features in, in um, PowerShell Studio that I love very much when I work with scripting is that, and I, this one, I did this one now. <laughs> I did this one now, this we, we have the feature of custom tools. Why? Because we do have tools that we want to use from in, inside our PowerShell, uh, PowerShell Studio. And in this case, I could go ahead and let me just enable my Python file in here. Where you can see in here, I'm integrate. Uh, this is just straight Python file. It's going to do an enumeration against uh, a record I'm going to request from SQL Server. It's going to display it on screen. At the same time, it's going to create me a GUI. So, but then again, remember, this is just PowerShell editor, but because I'm using uh, custom tools option here that I configured, I have, a, I have an area here where I can do run, Python run code, okay? And when I do that, and when I do that, you're gonna see that I can execute in a flash my Python code from within my uh, PowerShell Studio, which is great, because now even though, I mean, I could create, uh, in order to create this code, I had to go to a true Python editor. Here, at least I have everything combined, and I just, just go ahead and, and run the test, okay? All right, so when I click in here out, I can see my list here, of how it looks, there's a Python list of the same information that was displayed on the graphic. Okay, so, so, so those are one of the good features in there. Uh, now, PowerShell, by default, will have, let me get here, where is it? I call it non-SMO because it's not related to SQL Server Management Object, but you have the ability to connect to SQL Server using the System Data uh, SQL Client class. This is provided by PowerShell ar automatically. There's no SQL Engine installed, there's no SQL SMO installed in there, but now you can go ahead and, and run this on the whole setup in here. I'm not gonna run I'm just gonna display the data down there. Right click. And I'm gonna do selection console again. And that is going to see what happened here. And of course, there you go. Oh, up, 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 of course, of course. Missing information. Okay, so as a matter of fact, let me run the whole thing in here. Selection, and you can see it ran. It created a file at the same time, so I'm gonna go up to display the data. So in this case, I ran a query against my uh, an SP who two, which is to give me 
what's the uh, process is running on SQL Server and display only the 10 lines out of that uh, uh, result set. So this is great. Now, one of the good thing about uh, creating cross-platform scripts is this. As you can also uh, run the script file by itself, you can use the requires flag, the pound requires dash version six. That will tell you if you run the script file from the command line, then it will, it will tell you, okay, wait a minute, ver verify the PowerShell version you're running on. It will stop if it's not ver version six, okay? And then also at the same time, just like who were here, who, who was here in the uh, Adam Driscoll uh, session? Okay, so he shows, he shows these variables there. This variable is, is only on PowerShell Core, which is great because it's very simple to use because it will identify, oh, am I in Windows, am I in Linux? So you can start doing cross-platform uh, script that behave differently and, and you can add, you know, especially if you're using file path, you see is dollar sign is Windows, then export to C dash, you know, and you can, you know what, you can use the uh, forward, what do you call it, forward slash, if, if, if you feel comfortable with it, it, it will work. And then of course, if it's Linux, then different format for, for the path, so that way you can, you, you can use those uh, variables to help you, okay? Uh, all right, so now let's say we want to go to uh, the Linux environment, right? When a Linux environment is separate, it's not connected to, to, to Windows, but then you have to make sure you mount a folder with your script files. Of course, you're going to give me. Yay, another one. He always asks for password twice. Ah, yeah, that's what, when you mistype the password, forget it. I could include it in there, but I just don't want to. There you go, it's there. You see here, now, now we got a, now we got a, uh, you call it, uh, a folder here which is points to my to my files that are really my Windows file. Okay? Perfect. Now but, but what happened? Because I don't I can't use I can't install a Windows editor in there. I have to use VS Code. Let's open VS Code. A little bit. There you go. All right, so now, if I go and open my sample here for a uh, script that is, was run and created in Windows, and you can see in here, I have it all the visibility there, and now I can just go ahead and, I guess we gonna like to do this. I click, on selection. And boom. Okay, wait a minute. Where's this? Okay, this is right click. When one thing doesn't work, you just can do copy, right? PWSH. Yeah. And I'm going to do right click, paste. So you gave me the same thing. Boom, boom, boom. And there you go. So copy paste the code from my uh, uh, share Windows folder from VS Code into the uh, PowerShell prompt, and as you can see, it's working. So this, again, this is the whole, yep. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, I just installed it, yeah. Yeah, it's not configured correctly, okay. VS Code. It's supposed, if you have, er again, because you're probably missing extensions, yeah. then a little bit of configuration, uh, but overall is, the whole idea is that you develop something in Windows, in Windows Editor, and because you have a map from Linux into the Windows folder, you can pull it up with VS Code, because that's the good editor cross-platform, and then you can, you know, do whatever you need in there. That's, that, that's the whole read, read point. The rest is configuring your tools, okay? Because I normally configure, uh, use everything 
on my window side, eh, you know, I don't need to, uh, as a presenter, I don't need to really configure everything. It, uh, uh, the essentials are there, and I could configure it more, but it's it just the overall is that the code will work no matter where, okay? So, yeah, so, so in an essentially, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing here. And of course, you already all saw the, uh, uh, I do you call it, the, uh, the fantastic mem dem uh, memo, uh, I mean demo on the lightning, uh, community not lightning speed on the, on this thing here, which I'm gonna go, go here, PW. Uh, and I'm gonna go here. Ooh, PS session, that's cool. There you go. So you go there, boom, which is great. I just run the, I know, I know. I didn't do it the way you wanted, Fred, uh, Jeffrey, I know. I, I gotta sit down with you, Joe, so, so you can explain to me on, on that part. But, but then again, I, you know, from, from everything is developed on the Windows side, and everything is working across platform, okay? That is the whole wrap around of, of this whole thing, okay? The rest is about the code, right? The code, is, it doesn't matter. You are, you can use your, your spider. Spider is including in Anaconda also, that Python editor is great, okay? It's included. So when you install Anaconda, that's there. So you can develop all your Python uh, files and uh, code on, on this editor, and then you can move it across platform also. So it's great, great, great thing. You shouldn't be afraid to, to give it a try and, um, and, and experiment with this. Any question for now? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just the way that I'm calling the uh, uh, calling the file, right? <laughs> Yeah, Be because yeah, I'm, I'm using the basic way. I just put the, the uh, you know, the, the path, the file name, and then you know all the arguments with it that is that is needed. Uh, there's always different way to do things. There's nothing wrong with it. There's always an efficient way to do it, and there's always the beginner's way to do it. You 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 all know know that. You always start from okay, one liner, script file, functions, modules, and then after that it goes distribution of that. How to deploy it? You know, this is one of the things that our product provides is, is deployment. You know, we, we offer a feature for to deploy your, your solution, which is great. It's basic. You know, it's very is an essential that you can compose. You know, more than that, you you, you add more stuff to it. Okay. Yes. So, you know, Windows you run PowerShell and then you run the script. You know, CUDA, PS1. In Unix, you don't have to run. PowerShell to run a PowerShell script, right? You can be in Bash and you can say foo.ps1 if the first line of the script has a common character, pound sign, hash, then bang, and then a path to PowerShell. So from any, from any shell, you can call any other shell if that, or any other script, if that script has that pound sign bang and a pointer to their exe. Yeah. So on my next on my next presentation, I'll probably implement that way. Thank you, Jeffrey, for that. I really appreciate the comment. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I mean, it, it, this is the whole thing. I mean, I wanted to show this because all the tools are available, um, especially the features on WSL. Install it, use it. I mean, there's not why not. It's it's there for you. I don't know, maybe uh, the organization is preventing for you, this possibility, right? But if you have uh, a system at home with Windows 10, late, latest edition that, that you can afford, uh, come on, insider edition, you know what? Sacrifice a laptop, go for it, you know? It's been mostly stable for most occasions, all right, the, the insider version. And you're always gonna know what's coming half a year or a year from now, okay? It doesn't hurt, all right? Uh, So basically, that's that's all I got. I wanted to show you, you know, the script scripting mobility be between that and um, uh, you know, between different operating system, and 
and uh, it, it's it's simple enough, you know. It's, it's simple enough. It, you shouldn't stop where you're at. It's your future. Uh, I mean, is remember that at one point in time, maybe it's gonna come down to you that oh, oh, Linus, I'm in left, and they're gonna dump the thing to you. So be ready for it, okay? Just a lot of free tools, communities out there to help in anything you want, okay? We're here to help. We want you to succeed in your work, in your profession, all right? All right, um, so. Let me go ahead and. Uh, here's my content information. This is my blog site, my, my blog post. Uh, feel free to write it down. Feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, uh, Sapiens uh, is glad to sponsor user groups. Uh, I may be able to visit you guys and do a live presentation. Okay, um, I'm available. I'm always available. So I have my, my email address there from the company, and uh, and I'm. Hey, uh, there's one more item to clear in this. Okay, so. Anyone uh, can remember some of the features that PowerShell Studio has? Okay. All right. Let's see. Is it competing? Okay. Okay. One of the things I like most about it is that it I, it creates executables. Yeah. Ah, there's there's one. I just remember executable. Let me one final thing I'm going to show you in here, and this is one thing that I've been working on, on the um, on the uh, PowerShell core side. Well, this is an example of of a GUI running a PowerShell core command and execute into a Windows form. Okay? So it is possible. So don't limit yourself that the product will we, we'll, uh, uh, only for Windows PowerShell. Because there's way that you can tackle this. And basically, the way to tackle it, I'll show you the basic source code for this, is by script block Make sure I have the right file. Let me create this, close it, and come on. I know you. I have you in there. Yeah, and basically use a script block in order to run the. Um, uh, in order to do a, a start process. So you run the, the uh, PowerShell core in the background, and you just bring in the data out, uh, the data out in order to uh, reuse that. And here it is. Here it is. This is the basic. This is the basic uh, code. Just script block. Uh, in this case, I'm getting uh, an example of get the PS version table only, the git commit value, and I create a start process here. There's a pass through, and of course, I do a little bit of uh, deserialization and serialization back into an object, and I run this in Windows PowerShell to get the information out. That's basically how it was done. Oh, no, 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 I know, I know, that, that's, yeah, 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 I know, I know, you say, come on, man, this is just, I have, the, I have my own developer, uh, uh, <laughs> man, I mean, here, oh, oh, come on, man, oh, hey, we're teamwork, man, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, that's the same. Don't hard code the past. Uh, okay. Okay. Just stuff with the past. Hard code the past. Okay, so I want you two and you give me more. <laughs> but now, now, now it's now run to, 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 to three people. Uh, is, is more of the features that I talk about 
you mentioned one, but there's more. He mentioned the other one. Now I'm not, and, and, and I need to break the. How about, how about Health Rider? <laughs> it's a different product, but I actually own the product. So, talk about WSL earlier. Were you actually connecting to a remote system from? No, 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 no. That, that's, no. This is very essential. Just, just uh, do the start and run the PowerShell core command as a script and then get the result out. Uh, oh, well, in, in here I have the console enabled, so when you do select, run selection in, in console, the console that is active is Ubuntu, so it's going to run against it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that, that, that is the trick. When you do run selection, it runs to the active console you're on. Now, if you click the run button, <coughs> then it will run for Windows PowerShell, which I don't want. Okay? All right, well, you're the winner. You're interact. There you go. All right. Okay, guys. Any any questions? All right. Thank you very much for for this day. Enjoy the rest. Thanks.